scuba jet is one of the most exciting underwater multi-purpose devices around. You can use it as a stand-up paddleboard assistant, as a diving scooter, kayak, and for surfing propulsion. Maybe even as an e-foil in the future. Today in our Ask Me Anything show, we meet the legendary Steve Johns to find out more about this amazing product. Hello, Steve. How are you? I got right. my scuba jet set up near me. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. I'm all ready. I also brought the older version so mm -hmm. I can show where we started and how we made improvements based on customer feedback. All right, Steve. Welcome to our show. I'm super excited to meet you online. And today we are going to discuss the scuba jet. I'm very excited about this product. I have been testing it for several years. But I saw today you started on Kickstarter like five years ago. So tell me more how you got started with scuba jet. So the scuba jet device actually came into an idea six years ago. And then five years ago, they ran their campaign. I was actually involved with water propulsion about three years before that time. And one of my customers from that previous company contacted me and said, hey, have you heard of scuba jet? And I hadn't, so I looked them up. I looked at what I was offering and all the things that people wanted to be different that we wouldn't do. And scuba jet answered all of those questions and requirements from, from divers, from paddleboarders, from the US Navy SEAL team, all sorts of input into a product and the scuba jet answered almost all of those. So I contacted the president. We talked for about six months. And then in January of 2017, after the Kickstarter had funded, I came on as a VP of sales. So the, the product was originally designed and I'll, I'll show you just a, a flashback to the old days. And the original scuba jet was built to be put under a paddleboard. The president's wife got stuck out on a paddleboard with their baby and she couldn't get home because the wind was too strong. Mm -hmm. So she came home, asked her very smart husband to help her with a product and his very smart father. And between the two of them, they came up with this shape. Now, again, it was originally designed to be for putting under a paddleboard, but someone asked, could you put a handle on it? So they figured a way to put a handle on it. And that's where the name scuba jet came from. A little misleading sometimes because we're not a scuba jet. We can be, but we're really a jet. And our company tagline is, it's up to you how you use it. We just offer some adapters to let you use it certain different ways. And then another general adapter that lets you just bolt it onto anything you want. So if you decide that you want to push your door over and put a motor on it, you can have a motorized door in the water. So that's, that's where scuba jet came from. My background being a surfer, a lifeguard in the Navy, a water skier, a windsurfer, everything to do with water, scuba diving, free diving, uh, boating, power boating, everything. I had been around the water my whole life. And the scuba jet is so much fun for me because it lets me deal with people that are being in the water. And we all have a little bit of a camaraderie because we really would rather play than work. I see. So that's a little bit of the history. All right, so speaking of the shape, the shape of the scuba jet is very different from all your competitors. You probably saw all the other competitors are using like a plastic, white plastic, but you're using like a metal, very heavy, very strong. Tell us well, more of the materials and why you chose to use this kind of material and shape. Well, let's go back even before what you just said and we'll talk about the original scuba jet. The original scuba jet, while very unique, it was made of composite plastic. 
and it was very durable, but even durable sometimes has stress cracks and issues with water tightness. But the most important thing when you talk about scuba jet, and I'll show it with the new version, the most important piece in looking at scuba jet compared to every other competitor is what's right here. And that's because we're truly a jet powered device. We don't have a propeller. We don't push water behind you. We suck water in from all the way around and blow it straight out the back. So if you're, if you're diving, you're close to the bottom, you don't have all the prop wash kicking up. And, and if we know the history lesson that we all know is that in the 50s, the 1950s, the world shifted from propellers to jets. In that same time frame, with Jacques Cousteau and other companies, you came out with the first dive scooters in the 50s and around then, and they all had propellers. All the airplanes had gone to jets, dive scooters came to propellers. Here it is 2020. So now 60 years later, every dive scooter company is still using propellers. They're using the same basic technology that they used 60 years ago. They're big, they're heavy, they blow sand everywhere, the prop wash for the diver behind you. And just like airplanes that went to jets, smaller motor, more power. And that's what we've done. We've put a ton of power in a very small package. So that's the design difference. And we learned from our first one, we learned many, many things from our first model to the pro. One of them was let's make it all metal, very durable. The other thing we did, we added a track that can our adapters go on, but there's all sorts of screw holes that you can mount GoPros. You can mount it underneath something. You can do that. It'll be a, let me just go through the old versus the new, everything that we learned. So, you know, they look very much the same. They're the same size, the same shape, the same weight. But what we learned is the old one was very difficult to get the nose off. And it, it had a chance to leak a lot easier, but with wet hands, with slippery, you've been touching fish or something, very hard to get off. And also, if you didn't remove it right away, the battery would outgas and the, it would be locked on under pressure. So starting at the nose, the change was we went to this very fine knurled edge and threaded so it screws on and off very easily. You know exactly where it's right when it's finished. Wet hands with gloves, whatever, it's very easy compared to the old one to get on and off. Then the material, plastic versus metal. The intake, same, but we used to have a speed ring with choices of one, two, or three. Now we have infinitely adjustable. And then lastly, at the back end, we have that same knurling because now with, with a simple unscrewing of the back end, no tools, I have easy access to my impeller if I need to change it. And I can change out an impeller in about a minute if I need to. So, from the, from the channel bracket, we talked about adding adapters. And the first adapter that we have is the dive adapter. And it mounts very simply, slides on in place and screws on. So, so simple. The old version was, was also as simple, just slide on and screw it on. And it was a single handle, as you can see. The biggest difference is the single handle versus the double handle, and then all the information that we didn't have before. So let me throw a battery in this so I can actually turn the jet on and, and walk through it. But as I'm doing that, the double handle is much easier to control, much more comfortable. 
yes, there are strong advantages and benefits of a single handle, but it was very torquey on the wrist. So holding this way, it, it would cause a lot of strain on your wrist, even with use a forearm strap. But so that's why we went with the double handle. Putting the battery in, putting the nose cap on. Uh, so the first thing about the double handle, besides that it's two handles, is that it has a digital display. And in that display, I'm going to turn the device on by holding the two throttle buttons, power down, power up. I hold them for about five seconds. And you see it powered on. So the, the thing that we have with the new display is a lot of information. We have your water temperature, you have your power setting, and I'll use the right button to increase it up. Mm -hmm. I have estimated runtime at whatever power I've set it at. I have depth, depth gauge. I've got battery life in a visual display and in a percentage of power left. Now in this display, I have it right now in Fahrenheit. I can switch it to centigrade into meters. So that's user selectable. I also now at my fingertips with those two buttons up here, I have a bright LED light. Yeah, really cool. <laughs> at your fingertips. Don't have to have it on all the time. And if you misplaced it, it's always there. Then we have the triggers, the trigger handles, and you need to be at least at 4% power and you should never run the scuba jet out of water. But if you want to test it, it's okay to give it just a burp, just a burp and turn it off, let it go. Intentionally, we have, if, I, if I'm under, I have power and I go to pick up the scuba jet and I squeeze one handle, nothing happens. For safety, if you just grab it while it's turned on, it won't fire the jet. To run the jet, you have to squeeze both handles. That's a safety thing and you can hear it. So from there, one of the things about it is that you can, once you activate it, then you can let go with one hand and continue using it one-handed. I always recommend attaching straps to here or carabiners and then down to your waist so that it pulls you from below and you're you're not really hanging on to the scuba jet as much as just guiding it and especially if you're one-handed and it's pulled down here you're all good to go. So the double handle dive adapter is really a much more precise controlling comfortable kids or elderly using it's just a, a much better operation we will come out with a single handle i'll say someday i hope soon but you know maybe the end of the year or shortly after that next question what is what is also very interesting to mention is that this screen is wirelessly charged so you don't need to charge it separately it's basically getting the power directly from the main unit which is really cool to me. That's, and you know, that's, that's a nice thing to point out and it'll give me a chance to brag a little bit. We have a very amazing connection with no wires. And what we're using is we call it our secret magic. It's a SSC, Scuba Jet Control Center, and it also works with the paddle boarding. And it lets signals go from here into the jet and also information from the jet into the display. So you're right, that's that's a real nice nice part of that information base. And we use that further on with, this, with the paddleboard connection as well. All right, speaking of the paddleboard connection, it uses exactly the same system, which is really cool to me. And you're still using the receiver that you're supposed to put on top of the board. So let's talk more about the system and why you need a receiver, why it cannot shoot the signals through the board. Okay. And so 
when we're talking about paddleboarding, now's a, a good time to introduce this guy's big brother. Wow, that's a, like a rocket. It's 400 battery. <laughs> so this is the SJ400. And for paddleboarding use, they often prefer this because they're they're using it for longer, maybe all day long, longer run times. And as we look at this in the paddleboard configuration, we'll bring out the Bluetooth link. The, and this connects with the SSC link by simply going over the channel and it clicks into place. Once it clicks into place, it takes a little bit of time, but then the receiver will start blinking. That lets you know that this is connected by the cable to this, and this is talking into the scuba jet and getting information out of the scuba jet. Once we've hooked this piece up, we're able to mount our fin box adapter to the paddle board. And this one piece is actually for two different kinds of fin box. A lot of the inflatables today have this small kind of a slide this thing in the slot and put the key in. So that works for that. Then we also have for the traditional US fin box with the plate and the screw, we have those plates and plates and screws as well. And here you just unscrew this, put that plate inside the fin box, inside the fin box and screw it into place. So it holds really well. Then when you go to put your scuba jet on, you just slide it in and you can stop it at various points so that you can mount your scuba jet where you want it to be. And then it's mounted to your paddleboard. And then we take the cable part that says SJ up on top of the board with little Velcro or a lanyard or however you want to and mount it over the rail onto the paddleboard. This allows a, the signal from the wireless remote to talk from you to the receiver and then through the receiver, it pushes down under the water so that we can use Bluetooth underwater. Usually Bluetooth and water are not compatible. So we were acting as a range extender through water. And, and with that, it lets me put on my watch, have the scuba jet underwater, but my control link above water. And it's actually can you can be acting like a security leash in case it gets unscrewed and somehow it can save the scuba jet. Because I lost my, my last unit because I had some problem with this adapter and basically <laughs> my old scuba jet sank in the, in the lake. So I'm excited oh. that the new one has this kind of security system that will save me in case it gets unscrewed from the paddle board. And I, and I often suggest or recommend that maybe you put a small wire cable right in here and it comes up to the board to the, maybe the leash box or something just again extra security i also uh, noticed that we have the intake grates here that pull in the water i i'm a big fan of adding a mesh screen this is made out of tank guard and i just cut a 10 inch by two inch strip and i put that over this intake grate where it still pulls water fine but it protects hair and clothes, well, not hair so much, but clothes, bathing suit strings, uh, rocks and shells, or things floating in the water from getting into the jet. So, we've, right. got to, so we've got the 400, we've got our link put on, we've got our charger. Now, I'll just walk you through how this works. It's, it's actually, if you notice, a, a display very similar to the dive adapter. And we'll turn that on. We'll hold it for about five to eight seconds. 
and it will show that it's powering on. And once it's on, we have a lot of the same information. We have, this is something to pay attention to. That's the Bluetooth link. That means that it's connected to this right now. If you have your paddleboard and you're in rough waters and the waves are coming over the link, it may break the contact if there's a lot of water coming across and you'll see the Bluetooth link turn off, but then it'll come back on all by itself. So, whoop. so here we still have the battery life of, this, of the remote, what percentage of power you're using, about how fast you're going, and that can be in miles per hour or key, battery charge to the scuba jet, and how much battery you have left. So nice. to control the scuba jet, we just turn the knob on the on the remote. You also have in here a menu. And if I double click the crown, it brings me a menu where I can control more things. I can even turn the light from the remote if I have a light on my scuba jet. I can turn the light on and off from my remote. So if I'm paddling at night and I wanna have that very cool under the board glow, I can control it right from here. Uh, it's also here where I set, I would set the battery to what, what size battery I have. So this would be a 400 and display in US or Europe. And then I double click to get out of it again. So right. the remote can be worn on the, on the wrist. There's also some attachments that if you wanna take the, wrist, the wristband off and mount it onto this piece that clips onto your paddle. Or what I like to use this piece for is I can put this on here and then that gives me a lanyard point that I can put in a bungee or I can hook to a cargo net or something like that. But it's, it's primary source was be to be as a paddle mount. So if I mount it on my paddle so that it's right at my hands at my fingertip, this, this lets you paddle and control your speed with both hands on the paddle. Otherwise you let go with one hand and do that, which isn't difficult at all. And again, it's very good to mention that it's all charged uh, wirelessly. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. It's much and better than an old remote that we had last year. Right. So, yeah, so we, we provide this in the kit. It's also handy when you're not charging your remote. You can use it to charge your cell phone. Okay, speaking of charging. To charge the main unit, we use this kind of device. And to be honest, it takes too much time. I've seen complaints about it. Do you plan to make like a fast charge or something to make it faster to charge? So we, that is the charger that we use. And it, it, it takes usually four to five hours. If you have the 400, it might be six or seven hours. So I always say overnight, just throw it on overnight in the morning, it'll be ready. We do have plans, speaking of batteries, we do have plans to release a new modular stackable battery that you could use two of them in the 200 or four of them in the 400. And they, they go in kind of like you would put three batteries in a flashlight mag light. Mm -hmm. So stackable battery, that will also have a different charger. I, I don't have the full details on that yet, but we'll, we'll have that coming out, I think in the next 30 to 45 days. All and right. that's called the fly battery that is fully airplane legal. Perfect. So we spoke about the diving adapter, about stand-up paddle adapter, and I saw on your website, you have some plans to make like e-foil also adapter or something. Let me know about your plans about that. 
Well, I've been contacted by many, many people, even, you know, some famous people, some big companies. And even before we come out with something fully official just for foils, our Finbox adapter is, is similar in this similar shape to our old model, but we actually can use this. And with the holes that we've already provided, you can use this piece and connect it onto your fuselage behind the mast. Mm -hmm. Then you slide your scuba jet in and now you've jet powered your foil. Let me just say a little bit about foiling because I've been very, very involved with a lot of designers, shapers, riders, and things, is that the common question that, that I get asked is, will this power my foil? And th that's the wrong question to ask because the answer will almost always, I would feel comfortable saying, it's almost always going to be no. But if you ask the question, can that power a foil? The answer is yes, if the wing is built to support the weight of you and the power of the scuba jet. You need to start with the jet and then create a wing that's right for the power that it has. So we've, we've done some preliminary tests and we have flown people with a single jet there's also the option of putting one adapter on the top and one on the bottom of the fuselage and giving you double jet power. Double jet power, I'm 235 pounds, 115 kilo. Two jets will get me going on a decent, stable foil. All right. So it's something to work on in the future. It's pretty yeah. exciting because sea foils are really picking up right now. I see a lot I of people one. keep asking about sea foils. <laughs> I have one on order coming in the next four, four weeks. But so the e-foiling powered by jet power, it also removes one more variable for possible injury out of the equation. We take a propeller blade out of the equation and we go to jets and and as we do that, there's also many other applications that we, we have on our drawing boards, designs to bring to market. And that would be a transom mount for dinghies, a kayak mount for kayaks and canoes, uh, and a few other little secret things that, that we're not ready to announce yet. Very cool. But your main market right now is the stand-up paddleboard assistance, right? I'm, I'm going to say, I, I don't have numbers at my fingertips, but I'm going to say the dive community is the bigger market right now. And, and it has been. Part of it was because before we could get the remote working for the old version, we had divers all over the place using scuba jet. Now we have the new remote and new, new possibility to expose the world to it, but the dive world already knows about scuba jet and more divers are joining all the time. So, I and I mean, the, the scuba jet has been popular for many other applications. Uh, movie director James Cameron has bought 16 of these and has used them to help making the film Avatar, the sequel. We wow. did another, another, yeah. We did another Ryan Reynolds movie, Six Underground. And if you go there and, and they just very clearly hand it to him, almost like it's a product placement, but we didn't, we didn't even know it until we saw the movie. Wow. So it's, it's, being, it's being checked out by military operations, special forces, search and rescue, the movie industry for a lot of things. We had uh, one gentleman that we rigged a, a connection that would make it turn on and stay on by itself. And he used it with a, a cable attached to it to run by itself for 1500 meters to pull the cable through a pipe in the water to come to the other end. 
Wow. So that's that's where it's up to you how you use it. People come up with all sorts of great ideas. That's really inspiring. And let's cover the negativity that you might get. I, I always see when people try to motorize something, people say, okay, that's cheating. So what do you have to tell these people? Well, first of all, I'm twice as old as you are. <laughs> okay. I still, I still get out there and I paddle and I ride my bike. I play football still. I surf. So my idea with power assist, if you think about all the electric bikes that everybody's using now, why did they use an electric bike? They can pedal, they can pedal, they can pedal. Young, old, sick, injured, they can pedal. But what happens when they get to the hill? It's hard. What happens if it's a long way? They get tired. What happens if I'm an older guy, me, riding with his son? All the reasons for an electric bike are the exact same reasons for paddle assist, power assist. Paddle boarding, go out and paddle. I go out and paddle. My son wants to go paddle for five hours. My bad shoulder wants to paddle for five minutes. Mm -hmm. So I say, I'll go with you, but I'm bringing help. And I set my paddle assist on my power maybe at 20%. And I can be out there paddling for hours when we go to come home and the winds come up now and he's like, Arr! I just dial up my speed and I paddle home <laughs> nicely. So I, I and and a little side bonus is that when you're using propulsion on a paddleboard, power does two things. First, even at low, low, low power, it moves the board. And when you're learning, if the board's moving some, it's a lot more stable than if you're trying to get stand up when it's moving, when it's, when it's sitting still. So just a little bit of assist can help the learners stand up. Then when you paddle board, everyone teaches three to five strokes one side, three to five strokes the other side. Since scuba jet will make the board go mostly straight, I can paddle 20 times on my right side. My right shoulder is down low and I can paddle along with it and the jet's keeping me straight. Mm -hmm. Then I come lift up one and that hurts my shoulder a little bit. And I just do maybe two strokes and then back to the right side. So those are two little bonuses of add-on power. But to me, when I hear the word cheating, I think about the person saying it and they're probably a paddleboarder, a purist, a young, healthy, or even older, healthy people that, you know, they're out there paddling. And I tell them flat out, A, this isn't for you. B, how many of your friends can keep up with you? None. So it's for them. C, what if you're out there with friends and something goes wrong or someone gets into trouble? We're a tremendous insurance policy. We're a big help. Maybe something happens to you and your friend that can't keep up with you, now he can put a lanyard on your board and tow you home easily. So I'm all for paddling. And those that say it's cheating, I say it's not cheating unless you use it. But everyone else, it's paddleboarding is still growing very big. With COVID, it's gone even bigger, just like e-bikes are sold out around the world. Many paddleboard shops don't have paddleboards because that's the ultimate social distancing activity. Be right. out with your family 10 feet apart around nobody else getting good fresh air and exercise. So cheating, no. Helping to get more people out into the sport and the same with diving. I think it, it allows the possibility of more people to either get involved with the sport and activity, or maybe continue doing it as they get older, or resume it after some life altering experience change things, whether it's their strength, or they're an amputee, or a wounded warrior that fought for, you know, fought the wars for saving the free world. 
and he got blown up, well, why shouldn't he be able to paddle? He needs a little bit of help. Let's give it to him. So I, I argue with the people that say that's cheating. As I say, I'll agree if it's you. But for everyone else that's not you, let's get yeah. them on the water. Yeah, personally, I just love everything motorized. I'm just too lazy to paddle. So I put maximum power and it just goes like a jet board. And we sit with my wife, my kid, and it's still enough power to go. So it's just well, amazing. And, and I'll address that a little bit. And that's, that's why the paddle boarders, the 400, is more the, the size of choice because it has longer runtime. I will tell you that we were designed and our theory and our, our as I explained, we're here to help mo more than anything. We can go fast, not, not jet surf fast, not electric foil fast. We're, we're not that fast, fast, high speed product. But if you want to go fast, we can take you fast for fun, but your runtime will be short. Even the 400 running at full speed, 100%, you're only going to get about 25 or 30 minutes. But that's often enough if you're going fast. But if you slow it down a little bit, even in half, you'll get two hours. Yeah, and half so, the speed is pretty fast. Today we were running like 30%. It's more than enough to sit down, no paddling, just sitting and it keeps on going. Right, right. So it's fun. Everybody wants to take it to full speed, whether you're whether you're diving, everyone wants to go fast, but then they realize I'm not out here to win a race. I'm out here to be part of nature, to see the fish under the water, to enjoy the paddle, the cruise, whether it's wife and baby on the board and we're just cruising. We're not in a race to get to somewhere. We're just out to be out there and have fun and to get back if maybe you where you're going is with the wind, but when you come home, it's against the wind or rivers, right. it allows people that live by a river, right now, they always paddle one way. Now you can paddle that way up against the current and then have the fun ride home with the current. Yeah, yeah. Personally, I just love this product. We've been using it whole summer and last summer as well. So I think you got the winner here. And let me quickly ask you about the delivery. It's been honestly pretty slow delivery time. So how do you plan to improve it? Let's talk about that because again, we started as a Kickstarter program, a Kickstarter product, and any person that's dealt with or, or run a Kickstarter campaign, there's always more that you don't know than you do know. You don't know how much it's going to cost. You don't know what your manufacturing time is going to be for parts. You don't know how long it takes to assemble. And we took a lot longer than we had planned on to bring the original version out. Then we did a, we did a really neat thing uh, last year when we were making, preparing the Pro for release. We're an Austrian-based company Every jet is manufactured and assembled in Austria and shipped from Austria. But what we've done, we signed with a very, very huge manufacturing partner that's very close to our home office. And they have the ability to produce an unlimited amount, whether it's per day or per week, of whatever we say as we let them know. So, for example, in our in our version one model we were making them you know, maybe at the most 10 or 20 a week now we can make if we if we say so we can make 2000 a week one of the things that helped us do that is this product the first one was built by an idea with a shape with a motor with an impeller with a tube, with a nose, and it was all built that way by designing each part to work with each part. When we designed the Pro, it was designed to be mass produced. So everything about it is built to automate and automate assembly, packaging, everything. 
So we can now, for the first time, we're now able to produce in quantity. We have some people that waited, especially the Kickstarters, that waited a couple of years, and but they had faith in the product and the idea, and that's really what they were backing. Newer customers, in, in fact, I found it some a little bit funny, sad but funny, when somebody would order and make a lot of noise and they're complaining because they waited two months. And the guy that waited two years didn't complain. But that's because he knew he was buying into an idea. The guy now is buying a product. I gave you money, I want it shipped. And with COVID, as, as we were going through our manufacturing process, COVID hit us pretty hard. Not personnel-wise getting sick as much as some of our parts manufacturers were shut down. Once they were open, they had the backlog, they had to rebuild. Once they built and had to ship, there's all sorts of new shipping restrictions and borders and boundaries and COVID, nobody's coming in and Austria, nothing's going out. And so there were a lot of delays. We are now, right now, if you order SJ 200 or 400 with the standard battery, we typically have product in stock or coming within two weeks. So orders coming in now, we, we can expect if they order those things that they could get product shipped in two to three weeks then however long it takes to get there, which usually is only a couple of days, even to the U.S. I see. So we're I see. Much, so much getting better much better. better. Yeah. <laughs> much, much better. Much better. And, and the product's a much more reliable product. I mean, even, even as we came out with this, we're still making little improvements all the time. If we, you know, if we hear someone had a problem with something, we look at what caused the problem and go, oh, we have a better solution for that. Let's incorporate it across all of them. So we're still doing that as, and we'll always do that. Right, see. Okay, and my final question is, you've been in this industry for a while now. So how do you see it growing? Not just uh, paddle assistant, but jet boarding in general, e-foils. Where do you see the electric uh, industry is going? Well, I think the answer to that is probably if we look at 10 years ago, who rode e-bikes? A few, a few people. Who rides them now? Everybody, everybody. I, in COVID, everyone's out walking along the beach where I live and all you see is electric bikes. And, and you see old, old people you see little kids with their surfboard racks. Mommy doesn't have to drive them to the beach anymore. Boom, I can take my e-bike with my surfboard racks and I can go to the beach with meet my friends. Um, so I see paddle boarding continue to grow. I see electric power, whether it's assist or high speed. The high speed stuff, whether it's jet surf, Onin, Car Radin, Water Wolf, Lampuga, all you know them all. And the e-foils, the flight board, the lift, Takuma, uh, Waydo's just coming out with theirs. And more and more do-it-yourselfers and other companies trying to make it better, which makes them all cheaper. Eventually we'll get them all cheaper. As as they get cheaper, more people will buy those things. It's not there yet. So instead of a 6,000 euro electric board, when you already own a paddle board, why not spend 2,000 euro and power your own board? So more and more people will do that. The dive industry is, you know, the dive industry has been using dive scooters for 60 years. They know what they are but they also know they've always, always been, I, I, I make fun with, with divers at the dive trade shows. I point to everybody that's there visiting, working the booth, manufacturers. I said, everybody here does not use a dive scooter for the same four reasons. 
all of you don't use one for the same four reasons. They're too big, they're too heavy, they're too expensive, and you can't travel with it. So you spend $8,000 for a 60 pound device that sits in your garage and gets dusty. I challenge every dive shop owner, said your dive shops, your guys come in, they become a diver, they pay, you know, a thousand dollars to become a diver. They buy $5,000 worth of gear. They spend $3,000 a year to go on that dive trip to Turks and Caicos or Caymans or wherever. I guarantee you this is in their budget. They can't afford it. And you know, if you go back to the history of cars in America, Henry Ford figured a way with mass production to build a car so cheap that it became the car for the masses, not just the rich and famous. That's what I see for scuba jet. I see that we will become the dive scooter for the masses where a dive boat operator can stick eight of these in a bin that used to be the space that one scooter took up. Now everyone on the dive boat can use one. If you're diving a wreck, instead of seeing half the dive and then the next dive, you see the other half. Now I can just pick up my pace a little bit and see the whole wreck. I can get to places that maybe I'm not that strong a swimmer to get to. There's a great reef over there, but there's a nasty current. That's okay, let scuba jet take you there and do what you do. And if you're tired after your dive, we'll get you home. So I, I, see, I see the world accepting electrical help. We use electrical laptops. We've got the watch, the iPhone or cell phone, and everyone's embracing technology for it to let them do something they couldn't do. You know, I can, I can go onto my phone and hit the calculator and do math that I can't do. So I'm using a phone to do math. I'm using electrical power to learn or help me paddleboard places that I couldn't get to. I can dive to places I couldn't get to. I can dive longer because if I'm using scuba jet, I'm not using my energy and my air is lasts longer. So if I paid all this money for gear and a trip to be down on the bottom, scuba jet lets me do that longer every dive. So I, I think the future is very bright for, for electronic use to make life better and make recreation better and give us more options, get more people into the water, onto the water and under the water. That sounds like a winner. Thank you so much, Steve, for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you today. You bet. We'll uh, see you out on the water someday. Cheers. All right. Bye. -bye.